Hi, I'm Brittany again with Rec Room Recording. Earlier this week, Scott explained what a copyright is and why it can be important to register your copyright. Today, I'm going to provide a little more information about how to register your music with the U.S. Copyright Office and give you a few tips of what information you'll need to have on hand to do so. There are a number of online companies that you can hire to register your copyrights for you. These services aim to streamline the steps, answer your questions as you go, and provide assurance that everything is done correctly. This can be helpful, but it costs more money to do it that way. These sites may charge $100 or more in addition to the registration fees, which is currently $65 per application. If you choose to register with the U.S. Copyright Office directly, you'll save money overall, although it can be an intimidating process the first time through. I'm going to give you an introduction to that website and how to get started. The U.S. Copyright Office website can be easily accessed by going to www.copyright.gov. To begin your registration, simply click on the register portal. Since this video is focused on registering our, for our recorded music, we can go ahead directly to the Electronic Copyright Office login page. If you're interested in other types of work, there are some other descriptions in the categories below. No surprise, you'll need to create an online account to do this. User rest registration is a fairly standard process requiring your name, email address, password, etc. Once your account is created and verified, you can go back to the login screen to move forward with your application. Here's where this uh, copyright can be a little confusing. There are a lot of menu options here on the left side of the screen, and it's important that you select the right type for your work. In this example, I'm going to start a standard registration for a group of recorded songs that have already been shared on SoundCloud. When I click on Start Registration, we can now see a map of the steps that we're going to go through in order to fill in this application. The first step is simply identifying the type of work that we are registering. Most musicians will either register a sound recording or a work of the performing arts. What's the difference? A work of performing arts is only the musical and or lyrical composition of the song, like a piece of sheet music or a musical score. This is usually the right choice for a composer. The sound recording will be more common for a singer songwriter or band who is recording their music also. And this copyright registration protects both the recorded tracks and the underlying composition. If you're still not sure, this website gives a pretty detailed explanation of each type before you move forward onto the next step. We now need to identify the project we are registering. So click on new and add a work to this application. In my opinion, this next step is one of the more confusing elements of the application. Thankfully, the copyright website has a lot of FAQs and links that explain some of these steps so you can check in on them along the way. For this project, I'm registering an album and all of the songs on it. This only works if all songs on the same album are owned by the same songwriter. When multiple songwriters contribute works to an album, it cannot be registered as a whole. I'll first add the album title as the title of work being registered. Then I'll begin adding the titles of each song under the categories of contents title. To continue this process for every song that's included in this work until all of the names are listed in the table. If I make a mistake, I always have the option to edit or delete the titles as I go. When we finished adding titles, we can click continue. Of course, if you're releasing a single, you only need to register that song as the title of work and won't be including the additional line items. The next step is simply asking if this work has been published. Even though they haven't yet been submitted to the major streaming sites, such as Spotify and Apple Music, these songs are up on SoundCloud and available for public listening. Therefore, yes is the correct answer for this project. If you have gone through a publishing company or registered with ASCAP, your songs should have been issued an ISRC or ISWC number. If applicable, make sure that information is included on this page. These first three steps are often the ones that get people tripped up. I'm not going to dig into every detail of the next pages because they're primarily personal information, mailing details, just some pretty straightforward information that's uh, really nothing I can provide for you, such as where the organization is gonna mail your certificate of copyright registration back to you. Thankfully, again, the copyright.gov website also does provide a lot of FAQs along the way and little links that you can click on in order to get some more information as you go through these final steps. When you've entered all of the information, Make sure that you carefully review all of the details of your application before you add to cart. 
Uh, once you do that, you'll be making your registration payment. Final important bit I want to note, since your payment is made, you'll be directed to an upload page to submit your music or deposit material. The songs do have to be uploaded as MP3s, so make sure that you have those ready to go. Thanks for watching. I know we didn't cover every single step exhaustively, but we hope this is enough to break down the intimidation of submitting your registrations by yourself and helps lead you in the right direction to get started. Check with us next week while we move on to talk about digital distribution.